You're watching Good Day New York from the most powerful name in local news, Fox 5 News. He gave me a whole litany of destruction that he wanted to cause to the British. It was really quite unpleasant. He finished with the words, those who cure you will kill you. So was it a warning, that priest talking about what he was told by one of the suspects in the attempted terror attacks on the UK? The plots reportedly involve six doctors and other medical professionals and point toward a frightening new twist in the war on terror. We're joined this morning by international security expert Juval Alviv, author of a book called Stay Safe. Thanks very much for being with us again today, Mr. Aviv. Thank you very much. So do you think this is some isolated matter here or is there some widespread issue with terrorist doctors? Well, it is a, a widespread issue. I think what happened is you, one needs to, to understand there are two types of terrorism. One that is sponsored by states like Iran or Syria, and then one by, I should call, amateurs who are trying to become terrorists and try to, uh, to do things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, it becomes more sophisticated and harder to put a bomb in London or in New York. Law enforcement is getting better. So they're trying to recruit better educated and professionals to do it. But they're rushing now. And those people who did this bombings in, in uh, London last week uh, were really amateurs. Um, the bombs didn't take off. Um, the uh, components weren't right. Uh, the idea behind how to put the bomb, they just, they, they read a manual somewhere, they put it quickly together and hoped it's going to work. But it's important to make the point, as we said yesterday, amateurs with experience and practice become, become experts. Exactly. And if you have infiltrated in a number of different industries the right people with access to the right materials, then we could be dealing with a real problem here. Let's talk about how it might relate specifically to the medical community. Could a doctor, for example, be giving children what would seem to be vaccines but really employing some other biological agent a doctor that is willing to commit suicide and perpetrate terrorism would do anything to call to to perpetrate that cause so in his medical capacity he could kill patients he could poison he has access to chemicals and 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 equipment that is part of the components that terrorists would love to have and use during a bomb. And biological material, even Biologic. radiological material exactly. in a hospital. Now, another thing that a lot of us knew but might have forgotten is that Ayman al-Zawahiri, Osama bin Laden's number two, who just released another video, yes. uh, is himself a physician, a surgeon, and he comes from a family of physicians. Physician to surgeon. And it's such a, it seems so strange to us because we, we think that doctors are sort of above suspicion of any kind. Do we have to, in this country, start, like, questioning our own? Well, what we need doctors? to do in this country, as I always said, we need to do better background check, better due diligence on people in key positions in places that they could, if they change their mind and become terrorists, uh, could do big harm. We see already uh, uh, more areas that could become important areas that need, we need to look at. One is our food chain. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big area that could be tampered with. You're talking about a pharmaceutical, counterfeit medication for senior citizens that we now find out that they are poisoned, that they have problems with. Financing pharmaceutical, Finance. the engineering world, uh, the medical field as we've, as we've talked about. Cyber. Well, let's talk about, in, in cyber, in, in with, uh, with the internet as well, let's talk or in, in the cyber world, but let's talk specifically about employing some sort of a system how do you engage a system to better uh, screen people without jeopardizing and, and compromising their civil liberties? Well, that has been always the balance that, that we, uh, we have a problem with. In other countries, you have profiling, which is becoming popular because of necessity. This country doesn't agree to profile uh, people. Do you most think that's a mistake? I think it's a mistake. I think law enforcement thinks it's a mistake because most terrorists, in the last 50 years came from the Middle East. So you think we should profile? We should profile, we should do extra background check in those, er in those areas. With private investigators who have experience in... In, in doing it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Not enough is being done. I've been in hospitals, I looked at what has been done in background checks in hospitals. It's disaster. Not enough is being done. Not being done enough in, in any other sector. But in the food, pharmaceutical, uh, medical, there, is, there must be more, better screening 
there must be more due diligence. And, and you, we should point out here, you raised this issue about a month ago, long before um, the attempted terror attacks of this past weekend. Uh, Jalal Aviv, the author of Staying Safe, we appreciate you joining us again for the second time this week. And uh, for more information, of course, on uh, his book and uh, his... Uh, philosophy on how to deal with the war on terror, log on to our website, myfoxny.com, click on the Good Day tab. Yeah, I mean, the whole concept of profile, obviously controversial, but, you know, read the book, find out more.